Right, okay, so um, so this video, just a bit of information about how we go about maintaining our laboratory environment. So, um, aimed as a, as a year group for the second year for organic chemistry. If you're working in Megalab, and we're in Megalab area 4 today, we want you to have a good experience, we want you to get the most out of your practical, for the, the chemical side of the, the practical and how it relates to your modules, but we're very wary of the fact that you going into the job environment in years to come, you need to have good standards of practice. Uh, so we call good laboratory practice GLP, you need to show us signs now in your second year, even first year of GLP practice. So we don't like whinging, I don't like whinging at you, all of us will say I adore whinging and whining and grumping at people, I don't, I just want you to work professionally. Spectacles, gloves on, third time back if need be, lab coat. If you walk around the lab, we're in area four at the moment, you'll see sinks for hand wash and, and, and face wash and sinks for chemical disposal. What we don't want is any chemicals down these sinks. So should you feel at any point that you need to wash your hands, please take your gloves off. Glove, paper waste in the appropriate bin. We have bins around the lab as well for glass waste, but of course, should you need to wash your hands, please feel free to do so. What we don't want are any chemicals down here. We will get very annoyed if we see chemicals going down here. We'll be bitterly upset with you. If you're doing an organic practical, you will be asked to work in a fume covered bay. What we don't want to see at the end of the practical either is your bay being polluted with glassware and bits of um, uh, non glassware waste that we're expected to deal with. We want you to clean up. So, this little video tells about how to go along in the lab with GLP with spillages and cleaning up. So, let's just say, for example, you're working away and you spill in organic material mag sulfate, what do you do with it? You dispose of it. You will take some towel paper, you will get water, clean up, and again plenty of towel paper to clean your waste up. With the towel paper then with inorganic material on, this is to go into the sink, plenty of water, run it to waste, take the towel paper out and squeeze it into the bin. So that's anything inorganic. Let's say this is organic based. How do you clean that up? On tissue paper and put some acetone on. Let's say we'll take some acetone, we'll clean up as much as possible with our towel paper. And again, acetone the area as appropriate. Clean up all your spillages. So clean up your fume covered bay of organic, inorganic with towel paper. What do we do with this? Well this can be left here to be vented over a period of time and then afterwards once it's vented this is to go into the appropriate waste bin. Should you spill anything which is really really nasty and your demonstrators and academics like myself can advise you what's really nasty we might need to think about how we dispose of your spillages for example anything mercury based as an inorganic or metallic uh, material, we, we would advise you on that, but generally inorganic material with water, plenty of mopping up with tissue paper, run to waste, organic, wash the area with acetone, let the towel paper vent into the bin. Should you spill as well conk acids during the course of the day, conk bases, we don't want to be leaning in this, so if it's let's say no conk acid, what do we do? We'll get some towel paper again. We will mop up. We will take our towel paper and with conch acid, this must go into the sink and let water run over the top of it. You should leave the towel paper for periods of time, like five minutes, leave it for five minutes or so. Excess towel paper to clean the area. You might then need to apply water, so get some water from, on a, from the tap onto a sponge or bathe with water, dry bathe with water. We don't want to see acids spilt in this area. So we trust you with a fume cover space or likewise with a bench. 
we ask you to clear up. Now, you've done your practical, you've got a manner of glassware, what do we want you to do? Well, we ask you to take receptacles, bowls with you to your fume covered area. Once you've done with your glassware during the course of the practical, put it in a bowl, collect it together, and then you're going to wash at once. What have we got here? Let's fix, say, for example, we have some organic waste. Let's say this is an organic waste. How do we get rid of this? Well, in each fume covered, you'll have a waste bottle. You can either have non-chlorinated or chlorinated. If it's solvent, like chloroform or DCM, it wouldn't go in the non-chlorinated, you would use the chlorinated waste bottle. But we presume, let's say this is something of ethyl washings, ethyl acetate washings, organic waste into here. We again, we need to just rinse out the inside of the flask. This is a flask or a beaker. It's going to go in to rinse the inside of the flask. Then you've got a cleanish beaker ready to be washed with quadrilene. If you've any funnels which you think are caked with organic solid before you go to wash them, again, wash appropriately with acetone. Now you'll notice at this point I've got gloves on like this. Acetone can seep through this glove environment. So we ask you to go and get some thick latex gloves whenever you're handling acetone as a wash. Or you're going to use the quadrilene. Again, put your gloves on, wash, there we go, let's for example say you've got filter papers, pH papers, weighing boats, pasta pipettes, if it's a pasta pipette and you feel it's got anything organic in, you might need to wash the inside of it, clean it that way, if it's a glass pipette, clean it, it's organic. This goes into the purple waste bin. Likewise, if you've been using glass pipettes and it's organic residue on clean, go towards the glass bin. If you've been using glass pipettes, plastic pipettes and they've got conch acids in, you would then need to come towards the sink area with the plug-in, the quantity of water in the bottom, drop into the water if it's, if it's conch acid, conch hydroxide, let it wash that way and then you're going towards one of the two bins, glass bin, waste paper bin. Let's now imagine that we need to deal with inorganic waste, aqueous waste, how do we get rid of that? If you feel it's inorganic only, it's down the sink with plenty of water. If you feel it's got some organic in, even a bit, into one of the appropriate bottles. So if you felt it was aqueous waste with a bit of ethyl acetate, ether, non-chlorinated, you felt it was aqueous waste with a bit of chloroform to it, the appropriate bottle as well, the chlorinated waste bottle. But if you thought that was just literally copper sulfate on its own, then the sinks, plenty of water as a rinse. So you've now disposed all of your solutions out of your flask, You've now got essentially a bowl that needs cleaning. So the last thing to say is that let's imagine you have a Buckner funnel. The Buckner funnel has been used to have mag sulfate in. What do we do with that? Well, again, inorganic down the sink with plenty of water. If you felt that was contaminated with organic again and your demonstrators say so, we would then ask for these to be collected and placed into an appropriate vessel that we can dispose of in time. But simply, if it's just magnesium sulfate on its own, down the sink with plenty of water, wash it plenty of water. So let's go back to this now. We'll come towards your sink area. How do we wash up? Final part of GLP for us dictates that we need to clean up our glassware and put it back. So you're asked to collect your glassware from central sources in the lab. How do we clean up? Well, we take the glassware will have hot water and cold water running at the same time. We have appropriate sized brushes. So we now rinse with water. We take some of this soap solution, quadrilene, on a brush. We clean 
like this. So we're looking to clean the inside, the outside of the glassware as appropriate. We rinse. Then we're visually just going to inspect. Is that clean for our eye? If not, we give it a good scrub. Some glassware, you might have real charred glassware and you won't get it clean like this, but you'll give it a go. It's at least you're gonna try. So you give it a wash to your mind's eye that you're happy with that. Just take a couple of bits of glassware. So we're happy now. Let's say we've washed a couple of beakers. We then go back towards our fume covered bay where our chlorinated, non-chlorinated waste bottles are. We use acetone as a wash bottle. We rinse the outside of the glassware first. Then we rinse the inside. We rinse the inside. Maybe the outside gets another going. We rinse the inside. We're trying to make sure all of the glassware has a wash with acetone. Are we happy with that? Yes, we are. So we would leave that there. We will then collect our tray, place it all on a tray, and then we're going to move back to all the areas of the labs. We're going to tell you where the clean glassware should go. So we're happy we've washed our glassware up. We place it in appropriate parts. Once you've finished your lab practical, your fume cupboard should be clean. Your bench area should be clean. You have disposed of all your glassware, you've disposed of all your paper waste, all your glove waste and so on and so forth. We are happy people all round. We as demonstrators will not be taking marks off you as well. So those are some rules. Feel free to ask questions if you are unsure of where anything needs to go. Does it need to go down into the sink? Does it need to go into a waste bottle first before you start to wash your glassware? But please start using quadrilene brushes. Please come towards the sink areas with your bowls. Collect all your glassware, wash it to the waste bottle in your fume cupboard, wash with acetone, label acetone bottles, wearing your gloves, bring it back to the areas where we're going to recommend that you put all the glassware. You're helping us, you're helping the technicians out, you're helping yourself out with marks as well. So that's a few rules about how to clean up GLP in our laboratory. So thank you very much.